All right then. Um, since we have six people, uh, like for oh everyone to turn on their microphones so that um, Nicole can do the um, roll call. So we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, Nicole, could you go ahead and do our roll call? We are being recorded. Yeah. And I guess in some area, some of you also have a transcription. Nicole. Yeah, let me pull up. Okay. Sarah Jones. Present. Bonnie Schaff. Present. Faye Moore. Present. Nicole Coleman. Present. Christina Isabel. Joanne Inquest. Christina is trying to come on. Hi, I'm here. Can you okay. So I'm, I'm, apparently my husband's name's on my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm not a joke. Joanne Inquest. <coughs> She was here for a she's, she's still she's, there. She's visually mm -hmm. online, but I'm not sure her audio is working. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, Albertina Allen. Here. Caroline Livesey. Here. Veronica Martin. <coughs> um, and Angie Nelson Deutsch. Okay, so currently there's two absent. Okay, so the, so we re, let the um, uh, record reflect that we do have a quorum with the two absent, so we will move on with our meeting. Thank you, Nicole, for the roll call. So um, we have the approval of the minutes, December 16, 2021. Uh, Bonnie was so gracious to resend them today, so I hope you guys received them. And uh, she sent them out before. She sent them out back the same night of the meeting, but she sent them out again today. So then I want to point out, want to point out Faye, that that was last year that she sent them? Yes, yes. Last December. <laughs> <laughs> and then she reset them today just in case we had forgotten because the time was last year. <laughs> So she resent them today. So I hope everyone got a chance to refresh yourselves uh, with the minutes. And um, I asked for a vote on the approval of the minutes for December 16th, so we can send them to City Hall. You need a you need a motion. I need a motion. Yes. So moved. Second. Uh, I second. Shar. For the uh, people that don't know us, we need to say our names for the recording. Okay. Charlene Simmons. Thank you. And then do I have all to in, do a roll call approval? All in favor, show with your right hand someplace in, or your hand up. All in favor. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You have to do a roll call. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. have to do a roll call. Um, Charlene Livesey? Yes. Albertine Allen? Yes. Join Inquest? She's she's got her glasses. She's saying yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Christina Isabel? Yes. Nicole Coleman? Yes. Faye Moore? Yes. And Bonnie Shaw? Yes. Sarah Moore. I met Sarah Jones. Uh, I wasn't present for that meeting, so do I still vote? <laughs> no. If you, you review, if you review the minutes, you can. It's not oh, okay. not against the rules to do that. Okay, yes. And Veronica Martin has joined us. And my apologies for being late. Faye, for some reason, you keep sending it to the wrong, the email I don't use. I'm sorry. We, we hopefully won't have that problem next year because you'll be sending it to someone else. Right. <laughs> 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 Veronica has, uh, did you call uh, Veronica Nicole? No, nope, I did not see that she joined us. Veronica Martin? Yes. We were um, voting on the minutes. Of the minutes. Here. Here. And do you approve of the minutes? Yes, I saw it. Perfect. All approved. 
Okay. So we'll move on to our treasurer's report. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. I pulled up. Oh, although the host uh, disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, try again. Okay. I promise not to do anything obscene. And if we can't share my screen, I'll give you it verbally. Um, so there's been no changes in the uh, balance of our treasurer's report from December. We're still reflecting a balance of $15,224.75. Uh, there's been no new deposits and no disbursements. Okay, Chair would entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report as uh, read as stated since we couldn't share the screen i motion to approve the treasurer's report i second so that was nicole yeah. and veronica yep veronica second roll call vote sarah jones Sarah Jones? She's good. <coughs> Bonnie Schaff? Yes. Faye Moore? Yes. Cole Coleman? Yes. Christina Isabel? Yes. Joanne Inquist? Joanne? Oh. For some reason, her audio seems to be off. Yeah. She looks like she. She's she nodding. Like, yes. She can raise yes, her hand not. if she can't um, get her audio working. If you go to um, reactions, you can raise your hand if you approve. No oh, need. Joanne, can you hear okay. us? She said no. She can't hear us? She said no. Okay. She shook her head no, so I don't know how she could hear us. Or well, maybe she meant she couldn't respond. <laughs> There's a transcript at the bottom. Maybe she's reading. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's probably reading. Oh, is there anything in the chat? No. I don't see anything in the chat. I'm sending something to her. And yeah, maybe text her or something. Yeah, Angie's sending her something. Okay, so we're gonna move on while she's doing that. Okay, um, um, Albertine Allen? Yes. Charlene Livesay? Yes. Veronica Martin? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Next on the agenda, Angie um, is sending um, something to Joanne to try to see if we can work out our audio. And while we're waiting, next on the agenda is election of officers. And before we um, actually do that, I'd just like to thank everyone for helping during COVID. I mean, it was a struggle, but we were able to at least do some Zoom meetings and do some discussions and have a planning session. So I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule to work with the Commission for Women. I'm going to try to glean something out of our minutes that we did accomplish. <laughs> there were a couple of things I believe that we accomplished um, through, during those, uh, during our minutes and during our sessions. So uh, I will be trying to get the annual report ready for the oncoming uh, chair and myself will probably do a presentation to the city council in March. We're looking for, to try to get on the agenda in March. Um, I also uh, looked at our uh, membership, the commission, and the first one to expire would be Joanne Inquest, and she expires June 5th, 2022. And then the next one would be um, Nicole, expires December 31st. 
2022. So everyone is really in a position to serve in a position. Um, so uh, Angie Deitch, our liaison, council liaison, was getting together the um, the slate, and Bonnie helped out a whole lot. Thank you, Bonnie, for all of your calls to help out getting that slate together. So I think she has um, the slate. Yep, I do. Okay, so we'll go ahead then and uh, I'll turn the elections of the officers over to our council liaison, Angie Nelson Deitch. And I have Joanne on my cell phone. Okay. To, so she can hear us um, and at least um, we'll be able to get her to be able to vote and I have her on speaker as well. Okay. All right, perfect. So the slate of officers that we have um, going for 2022, we have for president, uh, for chair, uh, Christina Isbell, and we'll start with the, um, let me let me present the slate first and, and see if there's um, consent to just do them all at once or if you wanna do them one by one. So uh, we have Christina Isbell as chair, Albertine Allen as vice chair, Nicole Florek as secretary, and Char, um, Char, how do you say your, your last name, Char? Yeah. Unmute. I read my lips, I guess. Uh, Livesay. Oh, it is? Okay, so I've been saying yeah. that right. Okay. And, and Char um, Livesay as treasurer. Um, is there anyone opposed to doing um, a vote for the entire slate of officers? Anyone opposed to that? No? Um, before I do that, um, I need to open it up for nominations from the floor as well. So um, I'll start with Treasurer. Um, are there any additional nominations from the floor for, for Treasurer? Any nominations for Treasurer? All right, those nominations are closed. Any nominations for Secretary from the floor? <coughs> Any nominations for secretary from the floor? All right, that one's closed. Any nominations for vice chair from the floor? Any nominations for vice chair? All right, and last but not least, any nominations for chair? No, not any nominations for chair? All right, well, with that being said, um, um, our slate of officers are Christine Edwell um, for chair, Albertine Allen for vice chair, Nicole Florek for secretary, and Shara Livesay for treasurer. All those in favor um, to accept the slate as presented, signify by saying aye, or you can raise your hand. And well, you know what? We have it's to do both. Uh, well, no, it's an election. So yeah, but let's do let's do the roll call. I'll go ahead and do it. Um, uh, I'll start with Joanne Inquest. Yes. All right, Joanne, yes. Faye Moore. Yes. Bonnie Schaff. Yes. Christine, Christina Isbell. Yes. Shara Livesay. Yes. Nicole Florek. Yes. Veronica Martin. Yes. All right. I turn the meeting over now to the new uh, chair, Christina Isbell. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm excited for the opportunity um, to be in this, this spot to um, see what we can do this year. And Faye, thank you so much for, for holding us together last year. And really, you know, I, I think we, we always do good work. There's always some good things that happen. And, and um, I think that we're living in a time where where it is hard to connect, it is hard to make all these things happen. And I guess for 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 me, I think I, this year I, I'd really like to make some things happen. I'd like to to see if we can um, really let people know who we are. Really kind of define, um, you know, who what funding we can give and what are these projects. Um, so I'm so I'm excited to kind of see what that that will be. Um, I guess what, what I do is just follow the guidelines or do I talk? 
<laughs> I mean, I definitely have some some things, um, you know, to throw out um, to all of you, um, because I think if we collaborate together, um, we can we can kind of build this this year, because I was looking over um, and I'm sorry to say that I wasn't at that planning session and it looks like there were some really great conversations, but how do we really follow through on those um, those ideas and those tasks and and finding ways that maybe in our first month or two here we focus on like a research development phase of like what we want to work towards you know and what's out there like to be honest i feel very disconnected i'm not quite aware of everything that is going on um and and I, and I want to know, like, I, I don't know what everyone even on our commission is doing all the time. Like how do it, like, if we on this commission don't know each other well enough to know what we, you know, the broader community is doing then how do we make the changes? How do we impact? I mean, I joined this commission because I wanted to do some good. I wanted to, to help in our community. And I think that's why we're all, we're all here. Um, so yes. So I do see like kind of three, categories of stuff that we need to, to, to work through, like a research and development phase, like who's out there, who is doing really interesting work in Michigan City, you know, um, and in that phase, maybe we as commissioners can kind of reach out and maybe bring people to talk to us, talk to us more about what people are doing in this community. Um, I think we have to, there's also seems to be looking at this planning session that uh, we have a real need for marketing, marketing and outreach, like again, getting the word out. How are we doing that? How are we letting people know that we have funding available? Um, and then I think we as commissioners need to understand what our giving goals in our, um, are, as well as this fundraising plan. Because there was a lot of talk of different fundraisers and potentially partnering and how will we make that happen and how do we kind of connect with those other organizations. So um, those are kind of some things that I that I see. Um, yeah, how does everyone else see our commission moving forward um, this term? I would agree. I think it's important to establish goals, like you mentioned, because that really helps guide what we're marketing and what organizations we're really trying to partner with. Um, there's a lot of needs within our community, and so I think it's important to connect to see which areas that we can help the best. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And actually, Angie, maybe when it comes your turn, I've, I've been having a hard time finding, um, I know you mentioned a couple months there were gonna be these meetings about the Recovery Act funding that was available and like different proposals or programs. And I think it would be important for us as commissioners to kind of know what's being thrown out there. Like, do we wanna follow in that line or do we wanna take this, take our funding into another avenue that's not being supported as much this year? So maybe, in, maybe you can help us. I just didn't know where to look. I went to the Michigan City website, but I, the government site, but I can't find where these conversations are being had. Um, so yeah, we've had well. There's a committee now, so uh, I, I guess that's one thing. There, there is a, a, for, a informal committee that the mayor has put together, but we did have a series of multiple workshops mm -hmm. um, and um, to receive input. But this commission at any time can draft a list and submit it to the city council. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I highly encourage that anyway. If there's some things that you want to get done, mm -hmm. um, what I suggest is, you know, you know, prioritizing what your goals are and just sending a list and say, hey, we would like to have money for this. <coughs> uh, this is important. And just remember, uh, there are rules that we have to follow, but there is an entire bucket on you know social impact social you know you know things so um and i can send uh have gail well i can send who's the secretary now i can send it to the secretary um some of the uh documents that were used like the final um the final uh, rules for the arp yeah. funds and um so that you can review them um but it's pretty broad for uh 
and, and where you can spend money, but it's all about impact. And if you, if there are some programs that are going to impact, you know, women and the community, um, I think you just create that list of items and, and, and submit them. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I'm trying to find my agenda. I am so sorry. There, is, I got, I have three different emails that I've received. <laughs> things in. So um, make sure we're following the agenda. So I'm looking. Oh, for yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm not, I'm, this is old business. Okay. <laughs> this awesome. is, sorry. I think I'm on old business. Okay. And um, so I guess for me, old business is kind of like defined. Yes. Sorry. Bonnie, did you have something to say? Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I really like what you said about having guest speakers at our meetings um, to learn about what's available, what's going on in the city. This is the only place I've ever heard anyone talk about really about women's health. This this meeting is the only one, you know, and and so there are areas like that that I think and I think it would um, I think we would have room. Uh, not room time at our meetings anyway you know we usually um are done within an hour less than an hour so i think we'd have time too but i think that would be very beneficial to us and then on zoom to everybody that's watching it i, I totally agree with that i know that the the poor, i mean we know that our zip code has one of the highest uh you know low low birth rates infant mortality and all that so I mean, to have, you know, speakers talk about that and some of that, you know, is definitely related to um, living conditions and, and other things. So um, if that's something that the commission, if you, if you all pick topics each month and maybe have a speaker speak for 30 minutes, I think that's a value add to the community. I mean, yeah. I, I like that. I mean, you know, do your, do your business real quick and then give information for the rest you know of your meeting that that would be awesome yeah okay joanne is on cell phone so i'm hoping you guys can hear her oh okay yes thanks i hope you can hear me i just want to point out that our finest times if you look back through the years our finest times have been when we have heard from the community people who had specific ideas, specific goals that we have uh, accepted and we have supported with monetary funds. And we have to listen more to our community, give them the chance to be able to do that. I don't know what is, you know, perhaps we're not, with COVID and everything, people have not kept track of various commissions that are meeting. Uh, we have to be in touch and make certain that people are tuning in, that they are listening to us, that they are responding. There have a number of organizations in this community, number of people that are very sensitive to the needs of our community and, and can help us you know, do the right thing. That's what's happened in the past, and I still have a great deal of, of um, confidence that that's the way to go. Thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, well, good. I like, I mean, I like the idea of us really, you know, taking some time to kind of find out really what's going on here, but, but we will, we'll need your help to find these speakers too. Right. So if there's a topic or something that you are like really behind, you know, really want us to know about, then maybe can can you bring it to the table for us? Like how how again are we going to, you know, I think there's categories. So I'm going to back up for a second. I kind of look at maybe funding or how we want to like proceed with different areas like education and arts, health and human services, business, entrepreneurship and community development. Like in those three categories, there's like, are there places where we can find people to help us, you know, um, talk to us about those programs or if there's anything that we want? Like Faye, you just sent us that Workforce Force One uh, program, but that seems like a really fantastic um, program. And, and I was actually wondering recently if we had anything like that in Michigan City. I mean, recently I found this, this program in Cleveland. Like what are the big programs that are happening here that a lot of us don't know about like in Cleveland, I just found out there's this program called um, 
Edwin's Leadership and Restaurant Institute. And the aim is to teach um, prisoners a trade, but as well as teaching them that trade, which they have classes that they send into the, their, um, the prisons, you can watch them in the prisons. It is a classically trained chef. So this space that they have includes a restaurant, a bakery, a butcher, and an event space, which are all open to the public. Um, but they're, they're giving inmates a place to live rent free. Relocation fees are paid in part by the Cleveland Browns. They get a driver's license, they get legal counseling, and they get health care. So it's not just a restaurant and event space and all these other things, but it's actually doing good. You know, it's, it's giving people opportunities. So I want to know what we're doing in Michigan City that's doing that. You know, are there anything? Is there anything on that line? Is there anything that we can help support and create that? And if it is for women's health, let's do it. You know, let's do something. So um, these are just things I wanted to throw out <laughs> on the field for all of us to look at. Um, and then we know we're going to do a fundraiser this year. So again, you know, budgeting that out, uh, figuring out. And I think once we do this research, once we like find out more what's going on, then we can really hone our fundraising. We can really hone to be really specific, which people will be more willing to give money towards than just giving to the Women's Commission. And then in the last two years, we haven't even given away enough funds. Like, I want to get rid of this 15,000. Let's get rid of it and get more, right? Like, how can we keep that? that cycle going um yeah so um now what do i do <laughs> what happens now <laughs> sorry i'm not running a meeting and i'm rambling too <laughs> that's okay that's okay we're, we're and I, I will say we're having a workshop on um you know how to run a meeting and robert's rules of order next week on the 26th okay. at 6 p.m um if you if you have your agenda, basically that's all you're gonna do is run through your agenda, and if there's any actionable items, you'll ask for a motion. But we'll, um, it's gonna be fine. You, you're doing great. So, but how do we get those actionable items to the table? Is that so, me that's doing all of that, like throwing, getting that together, or is it the commission collaborating on it? Well, I've been sending out you generally the chair sends out a, a notice about a week before the meeting asking everyone to send uh, things they want to put on the agenda. And I've been doing that and okay. I don't get any response. So then I okay. come up with an agenda. Got so it. what you do now is follow the next item on the agenda, which would be public comment. But I don't think we have any public comment. Um, nobody other than us here. I did invite about four people to this meeting tonight, uh, but it doesn't look like we have, look like all we have is us. Well, uh, one thing I would like to add too is that like you, you talked about having committees. Maybe you um, have um, a committee that you have a, uh, you know, someone who does, uh, who brings some ideas, you know, have a fundraising sub a couple groups and then you have someone who has maybe um a health i mean it sounds like women's health might be one of the priorities so maybe that's something that um you you bring to the table and everybody brings ideas to the next meeting on you know women's health issues that you would like to discuss or and you don't have to always have a speaker but just to do a brainstorming and maybe get public comment if you say on the agenda or one of our agenda items will be um, women's health initiatives, right? And you put that on the agenda for next month, and then you can target that. And then you can look at, you know, you know, mental health awareness month is in May, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, so you could look at it from like a holistic perspective and just each month have standing that's fundraising and a standing item that's women's health, you know, and then you have, I almost said Dr. Allen, um, you have, oh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Alan, you know, with you know, who's been with the Minority Health Coalition, and and maybe you know, because there's you know, it's disparate. You know, the the health data. disparities is a big issue here. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we've been doing some things about health disparity as far as the hospitals go. Uh, we also have a person working with us that does doula, and she follows the mom through pregnancy, delivery, and a year after. And so those are some places where the disparity is the greatest. And that goes under infant mortality. So there are a lot of things that 
Yeah. And and if there's a check with the hospital to see if they're having any time of any type of women's health fair, maybe that's something that we could have a booth or have, you know, have something for citizens to want to, you know, stay, you know, in touch or whatever it is. I'm just throwing things out, but mm -hmm. there's some opportunities that you can have a presence at, um, you know, the back to school rally, you have moms there, right? That's a, a great thing in August that, you know, so I, I would say try not to reinvent the wheel okay. and, um, you know, really identify some places where you can be engaged, but with the money, you know, they're they're always looking for funding for Pampers. Diapers. There's lots of problems here, too, with lead uh, in the homes, and that causes a problem with infants. It causes cancer, brain damage, and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, there's just a lot of things, uh, like just breast cancer, mm -hmm. which you all, oh. we always talk about. Um, there's uh, prostate cancer that it, it affects the man, but it also affects the family, too, and the, and the wife. And so there are a lot of things. Dr. Uh, Ransom has done a lot of workshops for us. And so, you know, we could contact him to do a virtual presentation. Okay. And maybe some of the churches would, would uh, be there so they could hear it too and not just us. Yes. So yes. you have the flexibility for the agenda <laughs> is okay. what we're showing you. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, one of the things that I might recommend is um, you were talking earlier about, you know, we had the plan session and uh, and that was so, la you know, that was last year. And I could use a, a pretty good refresher on, on the topics that we discussed. And what I might recommend for our next meeting is that we, we have a chance to review um, minutes from our planning session and then uh, come back and refocus on that to, uh, then begin to figure out, okay, so here's what we said, uh, further hone our priorities with that. I completely agree with that, Charlene, that we take it and put them in priority order of what we're going to do first, second, what we're going to attempt to do first, second, and third. I do believe we, in the past, we have had speakers come to our meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember, we had the Lula lady come and also the, um, CASA woman come and talk about CASA and whatnot. And then most of our commissioners um, have given us information on some of the topics that we've mentioned today. And so when you, if you look on the agenda, the, a lot of those areas that you discuss are already covered by our commissioners, as long as they are on, they are the ones that's on our commission, that when they leave, you know, we might get somebody in a different area. Okay. Well, great. This was very helpful. Thank you guys for all of this. Um, I will be, again, more prepared in, on the agenda and throw out some things to, to some of you to first the support. Um, um, I would so say let's just keep moving down then, because then we'll maybe hear about some of the education things that are going on. Sarah's not here, but we'll, maybe we'll get some, some, some information here and that, that will be helpful. So um, that was old business. Public comments. I wanted to ask Angie for that date again for the 26th. What time is that workshop oh, yeah. start? Uh, Roberts, uh, for how to run, how to uh, conduct a meeting. You said the training is on January 26th. You're muted. Um, it's a Zoom link. Let me see if I can put it in the uh, the chat. Uh, okay. It's at six o'clock, and it's covering um, a couple of things: um, providing notice for your meetings, mm -hmm. your minutes to the clerk. You know the different things that have to be done um, because uh, we have to submit the the minutes now for commission boards and commissions. Um, into a portal, I think once a month or something like that. So we have to make sure that all the commissions are timely and maybe come up with some template to help guide um, people with minutes and talk about that a little bit because some minutes are way too descriptive um, and it really, the minutes only have to have actionable items um, that were taken uh, more so than anything. But some, you know, we, some people do word for word and that's okay. Um, but it's not um, 
for the sake of um, public record, it's typically it just, you know, the actionable items. Hey, there was discussion on this topic and move on. You don't have to get into, you know, all the different things that people said and all of that, but that's uh, kind of been, um, it's all over the place. So just to give a little guidance, um, I used to serve as a national parliamentarian for another organization and um, it's probably time that we do this with all of the boards and commissions. So, um, so it'll be the 26th. We'll record it um, as well. And, um, and I'll have a PowerPoint that I'll be, be able to share with everybody as well. Okay. And it's at 6 p.m. So I'm, I'm looking for the link now. I wanted to say, Angie, now this is long overdue. Uh, it's, it seems like people are, you know, with their first commission, they're not really prepared. You don't know exactly what to expect. I think I, with my first commission, it probably took me a year before I realized what changes needed to be made, what things we needed to do. And um, it, uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm really glad that we're doing some training now. Is that going to be open then to all people who are in commissions or just new people or? Oh, oh um, um, my goal is to uh, do something once a quarter. Uh -huh. um, because again, everybody can't make it, but we'll record it. And then, you know, this one will be kind of high level, but then each quarter we'll target one specific thing and, and just try to have a couple of multiple, you know, many kind of training sessions. That way people can go back and look at them. Cool. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, as I said, long overdue. Long overdue. I agree. I agree. Okay, so when I find it, I'll send it out to just I'll compile all and just send it to everybody. Great, thank you. Um, I guess Council Liaison's comments. It's our next. I've said all my comments. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're down now to the commissioner's comments. Um, community health advocate. Um, uh, I don't really have a comment, but we're uh, not community health advocates. Is that what you're using, Faye, or you're using that in place of our name? I couldn't remember your name because it changed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I knew it had I knew it had advocate in it. <laughs> no, it does not. It doesn't have advocate. No, okay, no, it's minority so health partners of Laporte County. Minority health partners. Partners of Laporte County. And I just wanted to welcome Joanne back. First time I've seen her since she went to was it Spain, Italy. Spain, yeah. Spain, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the capital. Yeah. Glad to have you back. Uh, yeah, good to be back. Uh, and and I had a delightful time too. That's yeah, great. <laughs> Excellent. All right, um, Sarah Jones. Oh. Education is not here. Um, Joanne, do you have? Oh, she's here. Oh, she's here. I don't have see her on my screen. That's so weird. She was here by phone. Are you here, Sarah? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, is Sarah here? I don't think so. I don't think she's here anymore. I think she oh. might have been earlier, but she's not. I don't see her. Nope. I don't see her either. Okay. So the next is League of Women Voters. Joanne, do you have anything? Yes, to thank you. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do tonight is because I think it's, it's important. This has been a very strange year, a couple of years, but uh, specifically a very strange year for politically. And I know I'm speaking very early for some people that they're not ready for voting or they're not thinking about voting because there's so much else on their mind. But I implore all of you, I implore all of you, I think it's a critical year for us to be thinking about the upcoming first primary and then general election that we'll have in Indiana. Uh, there, as, as you all know, uh, and most of us have been focused on the national level, but uh, we have lots to think about in our own state. And sometimes it's overwhelming with everything else going on with COVID, with the economy. Uh, but I, I, I feel that unless we start preparing now, we're going to push it aside and not really do an adequate job of voting. Um, 
obviously, I'm, I'm going to talk about the League of Women Voters and all that we have to offer to the public. We'll be having our, our vote for one one. And for those of you and I, unfortunately, I'm still running into so many people who don't know vote for one one. But it's one way of getting educated about specific candidates. And it's a nonpartisan way of doing it as well. Um, and uh, you can think about now as you hear about different candidates and you see, you hear more and more about it each day as we're preparing for the primary. If you have questions for people, if you have questions for specific uh, candidates, think about them. You might send them into the League of Women Voters. We might use those on our uh, on our vote four one one. Vote four one one is is for every candidate to be involved in. We don't charge the candidates. It's a, a free way of them to be able to communicate with all of us all of their constituents. And so it's extremely important. Um, the other thing is we will be having our, um, our candidate forums when you will have a chance to hear and see and talk with and submit questions to again uh, to the candidates. Uh, so I, once again, I implore you to think about how you're going to be doing that. You are welcome to join the league, of course, but you don't have to do that if that's what you don't want to at this point. But you could at least contact us and see if you get, want to get on our mailing list and we can update you on what's happening. There will be a lot happening in our local, in our state legislature a great deal happening, a, a, a great many bills coming forward. And we all need to be prepared for those and decide how we want to vote, how we want to vote uh, for candidates. Thank you. Joanne, I have a question. Um, are you guys going to do a Zoom legislation day? Oh, I'm the sorry, league. again, please. Uh, the league, a Zoom uh, legislative day. Legislative day. I have no day. idea at this point. Oh, okay. Do you, do you mean the candidate forms will be Zoom? No, 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 no. Remember, the we used to have in person a legislative day meeting for the members of the League of Women Voters. Yeah, like Which a breakfast, it? like legislative right. breakfast. Yes, Is that... legislative breakfast. So yeah. we, had, we had a legislative day at the state level already. I, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. If you're Faye, if you're talking about the legislative breakfast, we haven't talked about that yet for this year. Um, but uh, and we are going to be busy with, especially when the candidate forms have to be so early this year because of the because early voting starts so early. Um, I don't know how. I mean, maybe in April actually would would be a time that we could have a legislative breakfast, but we'll definitely get that information out um, as soon as we have that planned. And as far as, as far as how things are being done, I know I went to a state meeting just before this one, a Zoom meeting, and no one can decide how things are going to be done. <laughs> if it's going to be Zoom, if it's however, if it's going to be face-to-face, -face, nothing can be decided at this point, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Um, and thanks so much for what you guys do. <laughs> so important for today. Um, all right. Mental health. Veronica, Martin, um, is there anything that you'd like to share? Okay. I don't. I'm sorry. Hello, everybody. I do apologize for uh, being late. I am still on the mend. Um, so I don't have I'm not prepared for anything today. Problem. Um, hopefully by February. Um, but just so you all know, I had a, a rotator cuff surgery and I've been sick for the past week. Uh, so I am still on the mend, which is why my camera is off. So, <laughs> um, so hopefully next month I will have something for you all. Excellent. Thank you. Um, okay. um, and hope you feel better too. Thank you. Um, next. We have Faye with the NAACP. Yes, um, the NAACP participates in the community 
uh, wide. Um, used to be a breakfast, but because of COVID, we haven't had an actual breakfast. But we do, you can go to uh, the YouTube link. You can view the MLK Jr. celebration on YouTube by going to the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Just go to YouTube.com, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., Purdue Northwest. It was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, the main speaker was uh, Vicki, I think it's Vicki. She, re she received the Saginaw uh, of the Wabash Award earlier, of uh, well, last year, 2021. And uh, she was a speaker and she spoke about criminal justice and um, it was awesome. And Dionne Campbell was an MC, And the young lady that sang, oh, she did a beautiful job. So it's still on YouTube. You guys can go and view that at any time. Um, the NAACP is, is, is chaired up with Work One. That's why I was able to get that uh, notice and send it out to everybody. Um, we, we're still working on the Soul Power um, program dealing with solar energy and teaching and training young men and women to be, uh, to install solar panels. And they're getting into their second phase with uh, the NAACP is sponsoring a bus to drive the students over to, I think it's in Gary or Hobart, the training uh, they still, they're gonna be doing a, like a two week training in person. They had to go to Hobart or Gary, so the NAACP is sponsoring the bus, uh, the transportation for, to go over there and that's in conjunction with work one and the solar power for this area. And uh, tonight at seven o'clock, the Progressive Dems uh, is doing a uh, is doing a, a Zoom forum tonight at seven o'clock. If you go to type in progressivedems.com, you should be able to pull it up. And uh, three of the Michigan City Common Council members are going to be presenting their vision for Michigan City tonight at 7 o'clock on Zoom. So if you can't get it by just putting in Progressive Dems, then if you go to the www.progdemslc.com. Again, that's www.progdem. S-I-C dot C-O-M and you should be able to pull up the link to get you on that Zoom presentation and three of our city council members are going to be talking. I think it's, uh, I think it's Michael Mack, uh, Dahlia and um, uh, Brian Dabney. I think those, are, I believe those were the three that are going to be talking tonight about their vision for Michigan City. Nice. <clears throat> Right. Any questions? Right. All right. I... <laughs> Thank you, Faye. Thank you so much. Um, next, we have nonprofit women's issues with Nicole. Um, yeah, so Healthy Communities, I know, is looking for volunteers to help with their tobacco retail assessment that starts running in April, or starts running, I think, in February till April. Um, I know that that's one of the health issues in our county is that it's a very high tobacco use county compared to others. Um, and Indiana as a state is pretty high compared to other states. Um, and then another, I just want to announce that like Doonbrook helps with a lot of families in the area. Um, and they are going to have a new executive director in February. Um, Jean Ann Cannon is retiring, and so the new director is Dr. Tammy Button. Oh, I know her. <laughs> she has the prenatal dental, um, hmm. skip, uh, skipping stone. What is it? Dog on it. I can't think of the name. Hmm. What's the Never new mind. person? New person's name? Dr. Tammy Button. Is she someone that we would consider talking with us to share? Oh she... my goodness, yes. Okay, so. Because she's call. also done work, I believe, with health with pregnant women and children regarding dental. Care. Yes, yes, prenatal. It's dental care before and during pregnancy and after. 
Just very yeah. good. All right. Um, Nicole, would you be able to reach out to her, her to see if they would she could come and talk with us? Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. We've gotten through the oh spot, my best fine. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, but the celebrating Naomi Anderson is not on the agenda, but I would like to mention it real quick. Um, the installation of the sculpture happened last month since our last meeting, and I hope you've all seen it. It's an, an impressive um, sculpture in, in uh, Charles Westcott Park, and we're going to have the unveiling event in March, on March 19th, it's a Saturday, and the Women's Commission um, donated $5,000 to this, which makes us one of the largest donors and um, very important part of the the project. So I hope that uh, everyone can plan to attend the unveiling. After the actual unveiling at the site, then we're going to have a reception at the Lubesnik Center for the Arts, and that will be on Saturday the 19th. So I hope you can come to that. And then also, um, along with the artwork, we also put did a lot of research on Naomi Anderson's history and put together a digital archive at Purdue Northwest. And the librarian there, Joseph Coates, and I are making presentations um, about Naomi Anderson. Um, we're going to speak at Michigan City Public Library on Saturday, February 19th during um, Black History Month for an, their event and one of their events. And then in um, LaPorte uh, County Library on March 26th, we'll be making a presentation too. So if you can um, attend either of those, that'd be, that'd be good to see you if you want to know more about Naomi and her life. So, Where is but, the presentation uh, in February? In February, February 19th, Michigan City Public Library. Okay. It's at 2 p.m. Uh, what was the time for the 19th event? The, um, the sculpture? March event. 19th. Hmm. Um, we don't have the time oh. yet. I think it will be four o'clock, but not okay. sure about that yet. Mm -hmm. And the two, so we have two events in March, the unveiling and the Laporte um, presentation, and those are both during Women's History Month. So, you know, that could be something that we would want to do to observe that, to maybe be involved in it for that, for that reason, too. That's a table. Good job. Thank you. Um, all right. So that is our end of the uh, agenda. Um, our next meeting date is February 17th at 530. Um, yes. So before we actually close out, um, I'd just like to maybe take this moment and thank Faye for uh, serving us this past year. I know um, it's uh, you had a lot on your plate. Of course, I don't know when you never have a lot on your plate, but uh, and leading us through a very difficult time. So again, thank you very much for the work you've done for our commission. And um, just welcome, welcome, welcome to you, Madam Chairperson. So I'm looking forward to 2022. Awesome. Thank you, Charlene. Ditto. And I'd like to say thank you again, Christina, for stepping up. Hey, I'll be reaching out. <laughs> um, fantastic. It's going to be, you know, we, we just got to create the energy now. We got to really make movements happen. Um, we've been been in this still place and we I mean, just got to we got to shift. We got to help it happen. So um, I appreciate all of you and um, Thank you, and I will send out ahead of time to get input from you um, on the agenda ahead of time, and we'll figure out how to get that all to you in the right time too. So, um, yeah, okay. Um, so I make a now? motion that we close uh, the session. I move that we. Close the session.
Second. Second. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you, Angie. Thanks, everyone. Good night.